Fortnite squad. Now then, so the last video that I did, I went over all 14 legendaries that you could get from the main story bosses. Those legendaries were unique to them, we went over them, showed them off and basically spoke about how good they were. Well actually this week, you'll be able to get a little bit more. Gearbox is celebrating 10 years of Borderlands with a 5 week event in Borderlands featuring a ton of rewards. This week, it's the boss week. And with it, each of the main story bosses in the game drop the uniques that we went over in the last video, but also some other weapons that you have more of a chance of getting. So we're doing a similar thing here, going through each of the bosses, talking about their new unique legendary that they'll be dropping for a week, basically asking if it's worth getting it. The majority of these have been world drops, but there are two new legendaries, kind of, that I will highlight in this video too. Before we get started, I did want to sort of talk about the elephant in the room when it comes to the drop rate. It it's very, very weird. A lot of people that I've seen have been speaking about these drops, playing it on Mayhem 3, and they were saying the chance of some of these unique legendaries dropping was very, very slim. Now, from what I've heard from a couple of other people, including Killer6, is that Mayhem modifiers don't affect the drop chance of uniques, meaning that if you're looking for, let's say, the Gatling Gun from Mouthpiece, which we'll go over in a second, you have just as much chance of getting it on Mayhem 1 as you do on Mayhem 3. Even true Vault Hunter mode, where everything scales to you. But having it on Mayhem level 3 doesn't increase the drop chance at all all in comparison to Mayhem level 1. That's what a few people have said. It doesn't make any sense why that's the case. It just seems that Mayhem modifiers only increase the chance of world drops dropping. So if you just want random legendaries to drop all the time, go for it. But if you want these specific weapons, just leave it on Mayhem level 1. That's what I've been doing. It means that it's a lot faster to farm these guys. You don't need to farm for better modifiers, which could be a pain in the ass. You could just do that instead. Sorry for the big PSA, but I felt that was really important if you wanted to farm unique legendaries going into the future. You don't need to do it on Mayhem 3. It doesn't increase the chances, apparently, in inverted commas. But seeing as I mentioned the Gatling Gun and Mouthpiece, let's go over there first. The Gatling Gun was a world drop, but now for the next week, Mouthpiece will drop a interesting prefix of this. The Gatling Gatling Gun. It reads, watch me crank it, watch me roll, because of course. And it's a fully automatic Jacobs AR. Might I remind you that those were recently buffed in the latest hotfix. And it has an increased fire rate the longer you shoot with increased crit bonus. The only issue about this weapon is you can't get it in any element. It just comes in normal, which is a shame. The majority of the best weapons in the game are all elemental of sorts, so that's the only downside for this. Is it worth getting? You might as well, I think, at this point. It's a pretty cool weapon. It looks beautiful. The animation of it is amazing. But honestly, there are better assault rifles in the game that you should be using. But it's all personal preference. It's just a nice gun to maybe pick up and put on your wall in Sanctuary. Next up, we head over to Gigamind, who has an increased chance to drop the Nagata, which is a grenade. Much like the Gatling gun, you can only get it in normal. Its red text is belt a loader, and what it basically does is it fires one longbow grenade which teleports to your destination, but the Nagata spawns a circle of multiple longbow grenades that all hit that target. Now, if your target's moving around like in the gameplay, you're gonna miss every single one. So it's not amazing. I certainly think there's better grenades, that, again, you should definitely be using, but it is a cool one to pick up. Is it worth farming? for you can wait honestly you're more likely to find it out in the world you may have one already like i did but generally it's not amazing like i said there's just better options that you could be running might be cool to run on the infinite mo's grenade build just might be a bit ridiculous but i wouldn't say that it's necessarily strong right now but all of these you can farm normally just out in the world world drops but if you want to specifically get them you need to go to the bosses that we're talking about here now let's talk about killer vault killer vault isn't a main story boss by any stretch but he does drop a new legendary that's applicable to him. If you haven't done it already, you need to pick up the quest from Moxie, kill Killer Vault, do the quest, and you'll be able to find the boss, not only getting his 9 Vault Legendary, which I would recommend, it's pretty good, but more so that you have an increased chance to get the Brainstormer shotgun for this week only. The Brainstormer is a Hyperion shotgun, which is a good sign because all of the other Hyperion shotguns are really, really good. You have the Conference Call, the Face Puncher, the FIBA and the Butcher, all of which are really good and I would recommend all four of them. So how does the Brainstormer stack up with them? The red text is let's put our heads together and the unique effect that the Brainstormer has is that it shocks nearby enemies, I believe when you crit them or it's just more of a chance. This weapon is really, really good. I would definitely recommend farming Killer Vault in order to get it, especially if you are an Amara player. It's one of Amara's best guns by far, especially if you're going down the Fist of the Elements tree where you can change the element that your weapon has. So you can give it a little fire damage, meaning that it's great for mobbing. You can set it up like that. I'm sure Lazy Data has a lot of good guides on how to use it, but I'd say for Amara, 
Sparrow especially, it's one of the best shotguns that you can run. The only interesting thing about it though, and it might be a bit of a drawback depending on who you are, is that you can only get it in shock. So you can get it in fire or corrosive, that's the only thing about it. So if you're looking for a really good shock shotgun, this is the one to get, by far. Really good for proving grounds, but if you're looking for a fire or corrosive shotgun, this isn't going to be the one for you. But I would definitely recommend getting this weapon when you have the chance. But do remember you can get it basically anywhere afterwards, so there isn't any rush. Katagawa Ball has an increased chance to drop the Rectify. The Rectify is a shield. It's Hyperion as well, and it works in a very similar way to how the Brainstormer Shotgun works. The red text is you conduit, and when your shield health is completely depleted, it shocks nearby enemies like you're seeing on screen. So you can make this crazy shock build. Again, this might work really well for Amara if you put some fire elements on there too. And if you're constantly low health like I am all of the time, because you're just an utter Pepega, yeah, you're gonna have a lot of fun with this. It's not one of the best ones, I'd say. I think there's better ones that you want to build around but the most important thing about this is it's a lot of fun i already had one of these out in the world but i farmed another one from katagawa ball it's an easy farm it's straightforward if you want to do it if you don't have it but at this point i would say that you've probably got an even better one at this point there's not really a way that you can build around it so to speak but it has a cool unique effect and does a surprising amount of damage too maybe if you pair this with zane with the class mod that depletes his shields when he uses his ability you're gonna get a lot of shock damage there too but other than that nothing springs to mind katagawa jr on Atlas doesn't have a specific legendary that he's dropping at the moment, but he does have an increased chance to drop legendary class mods for all of the Vault Hunters. I don't know if this is more of a chance on the Vault Hunter that you're running, but I would definitely recommend farming Katagawa, also Pain and Terror, that has the exact same thing. Which of these should you farm if you want to just get all of the class mods? Depends what you're running, depends what boss you like. I really like the Pain and Terror fight, so I prefer farming that, and I found Katagawa to be quite annoying teleporting around, but like I said, depends on who you're running. If you're running in flak with the sniper, Katagawa makes more sense. It's up to you really. Which legendary class mods would I recommend trying to look out for if you're farming for them? I'll go one for each. Amara the Phase Zerker, red text is I'm always angry, and on action skill, you gain max rush stacks. That's really difficult to say very quickly, but they decay over time. So if you're running that elemental assault kind of build, I would definitely recommend this. There's a lot of cool stuff you can do. Like I said, I'll recommend Lazy Data to watch some of the crazy builds that he's made around it. For Flak, all of them are fairly decent, but I think Cosmic Stalker is the best one. Like a bird from the snare of the Fowler, your hunt skill power is increased by 25%, and you get some pretty good perks there. All of them are fairly good though, it just depends what you want to run. Moe's, it's definitely Blastmaster. Slow and steady wins the arms race. The longer that you go without reloading, the more splash damage that Moe's deals. We went over this fairly recently, it's very strong no matter what build that you want to run. So long as you go without reloading by going down bottomless mags, you increase more splash damage, which is good for Demolition Woman. You can mix and match, but that's the general gist of it. Definitely would recommend if you find it. And for Zane, I'd say the best one all rounder wise is the Executor, which provides extra kill skills, increase in accuracy, handling, crit, status effect damage, and chance. The red text is have a plan to kill everybody that you meet. We went over Moses and Zane's quite recently, so go check out that video if you want a complete breakdown. Class mods are really fun to play with though, so I definitely recommend getting them all, trying to build around them. The Rampager, of course, is the first vault monster thing that you meet, and he drops the Quadomizer usually, but he also now drops Kill of the Wisp. It's a Maliwan shotgun, which recently got buffed, or Maliwan weapons got buffed recently, so the damage that it's done by this is a lot better than it used to be, that's for sure. Some say it can lead you to your fate, and as you've seen on screen, you charge up these electric shocks that do electric damage as they pass by, and can also explode and kill the targets on contact. Sometimes it goes through them, I think it needs to hit like the ground or a wall to explode, not 100% sure, it was fairly inconsistent. This is a really good shotgun again, it only comes in shock, and because of that, I would say that the Brainstormer is better in that regard. The Kill of the Wisp is a lot of fun to use though, and very strong, so if you don't have the Brainstormer shotgun that we went over earlier, in which case go get it, because it's really easy to get, it, get the kill of the wisp instead but it's more personal preference if you just want these stupid guns to run with because they're a lot of fun i definitely recommend this one certainly not the best in slot but a nice backup option if you want to use it again works for stuff like amara or any elemental builds it's good to just have a shock weapon handy in case you need to blow down some shields it's very easy to get to the rampage anyway, so, you know, go for it. The Warden isn't exempt from this list. He has an increased chance to drop the Echo, which is a Tog Pistol. As a PSA, this recently got nerfed, so do bear that in mind. You definitely feel it with the Echo, but it's still a pretty decent weapon. Don't make me repeat myself, it's the red text. It's a sticky shot for delayed explosions, and it uses two ammo per shot. So it can be quite heavy on the ammo usage, but really there's not much difference here between an Echo and a normal Tog Pistol. You can get it in different elements, 
defense, normal fire, shock, and cryo, which is fairly good. But there's better pistols, there's better torque weapons. You don't get the benefit of having sticky shots, even though it does exactly that. So it might be just a little bit better than some of the other TOG pistols. But I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. The Warden as well can be a bit of a pain in the ass to get to. Genevieve has an increased chance to drop the 10 gallon, which is a TDR SMG. And TDR legendaries for the most part aren't amazing. They're like meh, they're fine, they're pretty fun, but like they're not very impactful. This one, I adore. I love this weapon so much. Not only is it beautiful, it reminds me of the Huckleberry in Destiny 2, but also when you're finished using it, when you throw it in the air, it becomes a drone. Let me tell you about my best friend is the red text and it does a surprising good amount of damage whilst it's in its drone form. If you throw any more in the air, you don't get multiple drones. Instead, the ammo in the one that you just threw goes to the drone to reload it, meaning that if you constantly reload in, you're keeping that drone almost 100% of the time. It's a bit gimmicky, but it comes in all of the elements, which is great. If you want a nice little corrosive weapon to sort of run around with you, that's great as an option if you want it. I really enjoyed using this though. I wouldn't necessarily say it was the most impactful, the strongest SMG that you can get out there. In fact, I wouldn't say it's anywhere close, but it was a lot of fun to play. Genevieve isn't a hard farm, and I got it fairly quickly too. So I would definitely recommend this if you want to go to the Voracious Canopy in order to get it. But if you're looking for the best of the best weapons, this isn't one. It's just worth picking up if you want something fun to mess around with. Now we get onto the brand new legendary that was added into this event, or at least it wasn't available beforehand, I believe. It's hard to tell when this legendary went live, but we are here talking about the Creeping Death, which drops from Aurelia. This is a TDO shotgun. Like I mentioned around the 10 gallon, TDO legendaries aren't great, and unfortunately, this might be one of the worst ones. Now, I said that about the Tsunami last time, and a lot of you said, actually, Ryan, the Tsunami's really good. What the hell are you talking about? So I may be wrong, but from playing with it, I really didn't like it for a multiple amount of reasons. The red text is, I creep across the land, and when you fire, it puts down these sort of corrosive blobs on the ground, which do explode and do damage to enemies when you hit them, but they sit on the ground until you reload, and wherever you throw your gun, it becomes a homing grenade where those corrosive blobs now go. Now this sounds really cool. It's a really interesting legendary, but it's just not very strong. I think it might have come in a bit undertuned. The damage that it does isn't an awful lot, but not only that, it uses a huge amount of ammo. I completely go empty when playing in this first area that I have to go back and get some more. So it absolutely pisses through your ammo, so you really need to be careful, but it just doesn't provide enough that it's actually useful. Like I said, there's better shotgun options in the game that absolutely dwarf the creeping death. So whilst it's brand new and quite exciting and has an interesting play style, I think Gabe might need to buff this at some point. It's just coming a little bit weak, kind of like the Maggie at this point, but who knows, I may be using it completely wrong. Now we go to the Grave Ward, who of course is a farming boss favorite at this point, and he drops the Airworm. Now I spoke to a lot of people about this when I was streaming on Twitch, and a lot of people were saying, I farmed this for like two hours and I couldn't find it. Where is this legendary? Where's it dropping? And that's kind of the thing. This one isn't a legendary, it's a blue unique. And in the past, I haven't gone over just any unique weapons because they tend to be far behind the legendaries, but this one we really need to go over. I'm just going to play a clip of it. The red text is the deadliest summer hit, and yeah, it plays guitar rifts whilst you're shooting. Does it do an awful lot of damage? It's a dull assault rifle, so it isn't as useful as some of the other ARs in the game. But I mean, how could you not use this? How could you not want this? This is a definite go grab it before it disappears again, because this weapon is hilarious to use. It's very similar to the Jacob shotgun the Hellwalker, very doom centric. But I mean, come on, how could you say no to a gun that plays this? It has two fire rates, but don't change it, honestly. It sounds a lot better when it's in full auto. But yeah, so much fun to use. Would definitely recommend farming it. But don't look out for a legendary. It's a blue. You just got to keep checking them if you want to get it. We went over Pain and Terror. They have an increased chance to get legendary class mods. But now we go of the Troy, who has an increased chance to drop the Nova Burner. Feel the burn. This is a really interesting perk. You do a explosive fire nova on depletion of your shield, but also when it hits max capacity. And this nova damage, from what I've seen, is very, very good. You've seen it on screen, I just one shot people doing a lot of damage. So I'm trying to show it off, I do get down to quite a lot, but it is one of those things that if you're very high fidelity and you can make use of this, again with certain artifacts and class mods and the general playstyle, you can do a lot of damage if you're playing some sort of melee build, maybe as a Maura perhaps. You can do a huge amount of nova damage by just losing your shield and gaining it back. So there's a lot of stuff that I think that you can really make work there, if that's how you really want to play it. Don't know if there's much more synergy than that, don't really know if it's that good in a grand scheme of things and more often than not you'll have this one already just because it was a world drop beforehand i had two before i checked so but if you want it go to troy calypso again fairly straightforward farm 
And finally we get onto Tyrene, who has an increased chance to drop the bitch. Nice. Nice gearbox. This is a Hyperion SMG. It's sharing a spot with a Crossroad, which is also another great SMG. It comes in any element. It's red text is if you can't handle me at my worst, much like the majority of Facebook statuses I see at the moment from single boomers. But it's a very strong weapon. It doesn't have any interesting perks. It's just high accuracy because it's Hyperion. It fires a lot. It does a decent amount of damage. There's other really good SMGs out there. The Hellfire, the Nighthawking, which is probably the best in slot, the Nine Volt, the Tsunami now, the 10 Gallon. But this is definitely one that you might want to get if you don't have any of the weapons that I just mentioned. But also, like I said, they come in all different elements. You might want to pick this up in a shock one or a cryo one like I've had in the past. This is the best time to farm a good bitch if you want one. And it comes in all shapes and sizes, meaning that you have a bitch for every single situation. But yeah, bitch is good. Go get a bitch. And what better way to get a bitch from Tyron Calypso? In the grand scheme of things, a lot of these legendaries that we went over aren't amazing. There's no really standout ones other than maybe the bitch and the brainstormer. There's some really fun ones, the 10 Gallon and the Earworm as we went over. And of course, the majority of people are probably going to be farming Pain and Terror and Katagawa for those legendary class mods. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you would like me to go through all of the rare mobs or if you want me to go through each of the legendaries found on Promethea, on Eden 6 and Pandora separately, do let me know in the comments. I'm not really sure how to break it down, but we have a lot of farmable legendaries left in the game that I haven't got yet, that I haven't spoken about. I can't wait to get stuck in. Let me know in the comments because I really want to do those videos. I just have no idea how I want to do them. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much for the support on the channel. It's been crazy since launch. You guys are the best. Take care. See you soon. Giving away copies of Borderlands to win one, simply subscribe and make sure you have notifications turned on drop a like on the video and leave a comment down below okay so this method is actually very very simple indeed and it's kind of familiar to a video I posted last week so if you disconnect your internet from your console or PC then start up and play Borderlands you get increased legendary loot and XP we all know this but at the moment you can only do that solo you can only do it on your lonesome you can't do it and play with your friends well today's guide will show you exactly how you can do this with your friends. So make sure Borderlands isn't running on your console or PC. Then disconnect from the internet. Once you have, load up the game. Once you have loaded in, head to anywhere you'd normally farm legendaries offline. Loot Tink in my opinion is probably the best spot as you can find 10 or more when you are offline. So head to Eden 6 and load up the Jacobs Estate area. Once you are in here, Simply connect back to the internet. Once you have done that, you will see a notification stating connection active. You are now connected to Xbox Live or the internet or PSN or whatever. So here you are free to join any of your pals parties, so probably link up. So now you are back online, if you press start or escape on PC, the game will tell you there's an update. This you do not want to accept. So now what you want to do is press start, go to social, and it will state offline connection simply click so you go online it's as simple as that once you are online you can easily invite your friends to play with you now doing this process means you actually are online and able to play with your friends but you will earn those increased legendary loot drops and because you denied the update your game is still in an offline state but your friends can still join you so once your friends join you you are free to loot Jacob's estate area upon Eden 6 is home to many loot tinks. I posted a video yesterday showcasing the spawns of 10 plus that you will find linked within the video description if you do want to check it out and farm this place. But basically from spawn head to the original loot tink area as you will see I do. On your way you will no doubt come across another loot tink. This video will showcase a few spawning so farm what you can. From here there are a few things you have to remember. You can't quit to main menu because if you do the game will register the update and you will be back online so do not quit to your main menu and this means you can't farm the same boss over and over but what you can do is you can fast travel meaning you can fast travel all over the game farming all the bosses which will have increased legendary loot drops and because you won't be playing solo things will be much much easier so yeah guys use this method to farm those increased legendary loot drops with your friends I will leave you to watch me and my power travel about a few planets farming buses getting those loot drops so enjoy on that note guys we have come to the end of the video if you guys enjoyed it leave a like it helps out if you're new around here and want to see more borderlands free videos be sure to subscribe and if you never want to miss a video upload you can turn notifications on by hitting that bell button but guys thanks as always for stopping by hopefully you enjoyed the video and hopefully i will see you on that next one
What's going on guys? Killer6 back with another Borderlands 3 item review for you and today we are taking a look at the Cutsman. Now the version that I got is the Binary Mocking Cutsman and uh, first thing you might notice is this thing is the uh, is that like a Black Widow symbol or some sort of other variant? I'm not really sure. Uh, this thing does kind of have like a spider look to it. So maybe that is supposed to be a Black Widow symbol, but uh, it's got like a line through it and everything. But anyhow, really nice design. Looks really cool. I love the new skins and textures and and just everything about everything in Borderlands 3. I'm just like gushing all about Borderlands 3 all the time. Anyhow, the uh, the variant that I got is called Binary Mocking Cutsman. I do not yet really know what that means. Uh, binary probably, I, I don't know. I really don't have a clue. Uh, we will learn about all these parts and everything soon, I'm sure. Now the version that I've got here is fire. I do know that this gun can come in other elements as well. And I would assume that it can also come non-elemental. Uh, you probably do want to get this one in uh, fire and shock at the very least. Um, the damage on mine is 1,415, accuracy 60%, handling 58%, reload time 3.2 seconds, fire rate 3.97 per second, mag size of 20. Uh, the red text on this one says, Little Android Man Born Without a Soul. This red text is a reference to a song by a band called Horse the Band, and the song is called Cutsman. Uh, lyrics from that song include the, the actual same words that you just now read, Little Android Man Born Without a Soul. Without that force of reason, the scissors took control. All right, the bonus stats on this gun include 28% weapon charge speed, consumes two ammo per shot, 60% melee damage because it's got blades on it, 69% uh, projectile speed, <laughs> 69, and a 1.7 weapon zoom. All right, let's dive into this and see what this game thing can do here in the Proving Grounds. Now, bear in mind, since I've got a fire one, it's gonna probably be even better than uh, you know, usual here in the proven grounds because honestly everything here is basically weak to fire i'm gonna encounter a few uh fire type enemies at some point i'm sure but uh yeah so uh this is a malawan weapon and on this game malawan weapons have to charge like uh here let me see if i can show you real quick see how it takes a second before you get that first shot but after you get the first shot out everything else goes pretty smooth on this gun it shoots really fast and this thing is just absolutely melting everything in sight dude holy crap Freeze this dude up, slow him down, and freeze you up, slow you down. This thing, holy crap, this thing. Okay, this is a burning Varkin, all right? So this guy should be resistant to fire. Let's see what kind of damage he can do on him regardless of his resistances. This will be interesting to see. Let me, uh, oops, I didn't mean to switch. Didn't mean to switch, okay, here we go. Let's freeze him up, uh, let's teleport Zane over there, let him get in on the action. Um, okay, so one thing to note is the projectiles do come out slow. You do have to uh, get within a certain uh, range. Oh, cool! I needed that. Um, so let's let's wipe this guy out. And as you can see, it shoots out like a uh, a wave of electricity, I guess you would say. <laughs> but it, it is slow moving. Um, so ideally, you're probably going to want to get, you know, medium close range with this gun. But it is an SMG, so you'd probably want to do that anyhow. But holy oh, crap, dude, this thing eyes. is... That, that, wow. <laughs> this is uh, tearing it up, dude. It's tearing it up. And we're not using that much ammo at the moment either. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, but we haven't used as much ammo as I would have expected after that much shooting. Huh, all right, so it does... Uh, do two ammo per shot, right? Yep, two ammo per shot. But it absolutely melts face, man. This thing, this thing is potentially pretty OP, man. <laughs> I don't even have like my clone and drone out right now. Uh, when I have my clone and drone out, I get 60% gun damage. So let's bring those out and do even more work, I guess. <laughs> And then obviously I've got it set up so that my uh, my clone has a copy of my gun right now. So in addition to me melting things, he's melting things. This is a pretty OP combo with Zane, in my opinion. I'm just gonna let uh, I'm gonna let clone do some work here, so we can see we can see it in action. This is kind of a what is he doing? Here, teleport over here and shoot shoot him from over there, guy. When they get right up on him, he gets really confused or something. I don't know. There he goes. I was, I was beginning to think he forgot to shoot the gun. <laughs> Come on, dude. You can do it. All right, how about you need a better angle? Here, come over here. 
All right, here's another uh, fire uh, resistant enemy. So let's try him out. It doesn't even care. Oh my God, it doesn't even care that he resists. Wow. This gun is the tits. We're gonna zip through the proving grounds here, man. This, this is, okay, and then you got this little dude. Uh, this guy doesn't uh, hold still for nothing, though. <laughs> and then right as I say that, he holds still. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> oh, yeah. We'll get, the, we'll get our clone and drone back up here in a second, and then we'll do some, like, serious damage. Like, we're already doing damage without him, man. This is nuts. And I still haven't even, like, fallen below 1,300 ammo. <laughs> what the hell, man? This is crazy good. Okay, so this gun's called the Cutsman. <laughs> You're gonna want to find this thing, guys. You're gonna want to get one of these. <laughs> like, where is everybody? There we go. All right. Drone's not ready yet. Soon, drone. Soon, you can join in the action. All right. Here's where this gun will have some issues: is with flying enemies that move around a lot. But even then, <laughs> even then, you're gonna, you know, not have that much trouble. Oh, I thought I was gonna be able to bust that up. Good lord, dude. Oh my god, he literally, like, he literally melted. Alright, I got this guy, I got this guy. Alright, there you go. Clone, do some work. Um, here, come over here, clone. Alright, what you got going on over here? That dude's all up in your business, man. Can't have that. So yeah, you guys are going to want to find the Cutsman. I do not yet know who, uh, I don't think we have a confirmed loot source as of yet on this gun. Once I do know that, I will absolutely let you guys know either via a pinned comment or a, um, maybe something in the description of the video, maybe both. So be on the lookout for that once we know who actually can drop this on a consistent basis. This will be one that you're going to probably want to farm. <laughs> You're probably gonna want to get you one of these guys because this thing is doing some serious work, dude. Serious work. I, you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, slow-moving projectile SMGs, but it's hard to argue with these results. <laughs> you know, hard to argue with these results. And we're about to go up against the boss here, real quick. I still haven't fallen below a thousand ammo yet. All right, let's get the clone. Everyone will be ready soon. Oh my god. This is like the Lyuda versus the boss, man. Holy crap. <laughs> oh my god. This this dude, he he was not ready for this. Oh, I couldn't slide. Why could I not slide? Wow. This is really, really good. <laughs> really really good that one deserves a oops that one deserves me not knowing how to use my controller that one deserves a laugh <laughs> all right good stuff <laughs> so i hope you guys enjoyed this look at this uh this amazing weapon again it's called the cutsman highly recommend this thing man uh obviously we were using the fire element versus fleshy target so it did you know lots of work but even when we used it against a fire resistant enemy it melted their face. So is this gun worth getting? Yes. <laughs> yes. And because you didn't get that from the, the entirety of the rest of the video, yes, it's worth getting. Um, again, I don't yet know how to get it. Once I do know that, I will post it down in the comments below as a pinned comment for you guys so that you know uh, just exactly where to go to farm this thing. Um, uh, and again, the version, I guess, the binary mocking, they're probably is better options out there honestly i mean if you look down through the parts uh you'll see that uh boom, boom, boom damage okay this one's got damage plus 300 percent with this barrel i don't know if this barrel is like locked for this one or not so be on the lookout for that uh elemental damage plus 10 percent projectile speed plus 30 percent melee damage uh another damage bonus with the uh the sights there 20 round mag um and I don't know what else on this thing would really make it as badass as it was, but be on the lookout for that gun, dudes. You're going to want to get one. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please take a second, hit that like button, hit subscribe for more. Post down in the comment section below if you have found this gun, uh, who dropped it for you, were you able to get it more than once from that same enemy on a consistent basis. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.